the ink and I'm going to spread it out over, you can see where that stencil is, I'm going to put it at the top of the stencil and put about a half inch thick wide strip of ink. And then I'm going to grab my scooby. And what I do first is called a flood stroke, and that puts ink into the stencil. So I lift this up, and with a flood stroke, I don't have to press very hard. I'm just pulling across, and I, and I actually go up to the edge so I can scoop up all that ink, slap it back down. Whoops, slapped it down kind of sloppily there. Got it on the edge. Um, and pull it back up. And so that puts ink into my stencil. And now I'm going to print onto my um, uh, sheet of um, acetate. And I want to, with when I pull a print, you can see this is raised off the surface. See that bounce it's giving? That means you really have to put your weight into it to press it down. Um, and for those that are shorter, you'll want to use the uh, stool that we have. We found. <laughs> that way you can get the leverage. Um, and I want to, with a wider stencil like this, I want to use two hands and really um, pull uh, and keep it firm, uh, firm pressure uh, for the whole um, length of the pull. And I want to make sure my uh, squeegee is not at a 45. I want it more, uh, this would be a 90, this is a 45. I want it at about 70 to 80 degrees. And so I'm going to push down and pull. And sometimes with these bigger stencils, I'll do two pulls to make sure. And if I do two pulls, that means for the entire edition, I have to always do two pulls to keep it even. And, and then I do a flood stroke again, and I'm going to put a little more ink down for the flood stroke. If you do a flood stroke and it doesn't fill the entire stencil, it means you've got to print on scrap paper um, till you get a good flood stroke. So I just put a little more ink down to ensure that I get a decent flood stroke. So that's a good flood stroke. It's filled in. I can use this to prop. And so now we can see my... Um, uh, stencils are my yeah stencils have been printed on the plastic mm -hmm. so this is where those uh, tabbing your paper and using registration bars comes in handy so I'm going to attach these um, metal registration tabs to my plastic um, tabs here and then I can take a little bit of tape and let me use this so I, I would do this to my working copy, and we're going to call this my working copy. Um, that I'm gonna, going to line up my stencils with the working copy. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a little tape on the end of the metal here, so that when I slide this under, I can then tape it down. And sometimes that can be a pain, the tape starts catching everything. But what I'm trying to do is line up the stencil that I've printed on the acetate with the shape on my working copy. And it's gonna, there we go, almost, it's not gonna be perfect because it's the wax paper one. All right, so once that's lined up, I'm gonna press the tape down on my metal tabs and then I can pull this out of the way. And take this off and get that out of the way. And I'll grab this one, which doesn't have the gray on it, and tab it. This can be washed now. This is why I keep um, a sponge. And I can wipe it with a sponge over here, or I can bring it to the sink and wash it. Somebody wants to do that for me, that'd be awesome. All right, so now I'm ready to pull this. And so I've got my flood. If you took a long time in between your flood and your print, I would say print on scrap newsprint just to make sure. But that should be okay. It shouldn't have dried up on me. It didn't take like five minutes or more. Yep. So uh, again, firm push, nice and even pull all the way. And I'm going to do two. Ooh, I almost threw that actually. <laughs> and we got a nice stencil. 
So then I, if I'm ready to print again, because uh, I've I only tabbed up, you know, a, a small amount of uh, paper, so I don't have another one to pull this. If I did, I would pull a flood stroke right now. So I'll do it, pull my flood stroke. It's a good flood stroke. And then I'm ready to print um, my next one. So I would prop this up, peel this, uh, take these off the tabs, and tab down my next piece of paper. So you, do you just like do, you would do the gray keep doing additions? So, say that again? So you just keep doing additions? Yeah, yeah, I would keep there. doing it till I'm done with the gray. So if I've okay. tabbed 25 pieces of paper, I would keep pulling until I have the gray on 25 pieces. Okay. And then I would set this aside where it can dry. And now I'm ready for my next color. So um, we can pause that. Okay. Your spoon and your baker's mate and clean up um, all the excess ink off of your um, squeegee and your screen. Uh, this stuff can get used over and over. So is the baker's mate in the sink mm -hmm. still? I don't, no, it's right here. Okay. So then look at all this ink. If you scrape that up, look how much you're saving. And it really will help if anybody wants to use this gray. All right, and, and now it's ready to be cleaned. So I would take this over to the sink and wash this pencil. Um, all right, so when I'm ready to do my next stencil, this stencil was done with the um, drawing fluid and screen filler, and we can see I have these areas I need to cover up with tape. So I want to make sure I do that. Cover up anything that I don't want ink coming through. And when I'm, when I'm preparing any screen for printing, I always cover up my duct tape edges um, because that's a, a easy spot for the emulsion to have like a, like a razor thin edge that didn't get covered that you don't see. And then you print and you find you have this line on your print that you didn't want. So I always cover up my duct tape with masking tape. So now um, with this, you know, I just put this in without looking at my print to see which direction I need it. Doesn't matter the direction of the um, screen. I could put it in sideways, um, upside down. It, it just matters how you line up your um, Paper. your paper with what's printed on your acetate. So I'm going to lay that down again. And just making sure I'm going to be printing on the acetate. That's important. Mm -hmm. um, so we Don't you, do you need the foam thingies again? Yes, good call. Um, they Got you. <laughs> on a, yes. So we want the foam core feet. Eventually, I'd have to replace this tape. I'm going to put those a little bit Thank you, Olivia. Mm -hmm. right. So now I'm going to um, scoop out the screen. Same amount, you know, about an inch wide, half inch wide um, strip of ink. And then I'm going to do a flood stroke. Mm. Scoop up any excess, slap it down um, in, at the top of the stencil. Prop this up. Okay, and I'm ready to print on the acetate. So again, I'm using two hands and a nice, firm, even pull. I think one stroke should be good for that. It's not, a, it's not as... Uh, 
big of a stencil is that big gray shape. So I think one pull generally would be fine. Um, you'll just have to decide for yourself as you print. Um, but that was good. So I do a flood stroke, flooding the ink in my stencil so it doesn't dry. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and now I'm going to line up my working copy. Can you grab me that? Thank you, Carolyn. So we, we all print onto the clear transparency paper first and then you sort of layer it? Yeah. Okay. You're doing you're printing on the clear transparency so you can see how to set up and, and can anybody see my problem here? My tabs are off. So yes, damn it. Um, so that so that's it does a problem. Matter. Yes, does it matter. Does matter. <laughs> so I have to do that all over again. Oh. Um, I'm going to flood stroke. And I always want to make sure the flood stroke fills my stencil. If per chance it didn't fill your stencil, you would take <laughs> a piece of newsprint, pull onto the newsprint, put more ink down, redo your flood stroke. Um, if because if you uh, if the ink didn't fill your uh, stencil when you print, you're going to get a blank spot where you print and you don't want that. So now I will try to line this up better. So, I'm lining up the stencil. I'm going to get it fairly close. And so, should we just have our full composition sketch on a sheet like this? Yeah, I, I just, uh, a reg your regular drawing paper, your colored, you know, the one you're doing the color pencil drawing on, like um, what Rebecca has over there, that can be your working copy. Okay. And you can line up all your stencils with your original drawing. Okay. On the paper? Yeah. Uh, it's it's water based, air dry, so uh, pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So, like ten minutes um, usually. All right. So now this is the tricky part. Trying to get in under here. Um, sometimes if this isn't dripping wet, I'll set it off. Make sure I don't put it over one of my prints, and put the screen all the way up so I can actually reach these. And I'm going to double check my line up. <laughs> Is that the dog? Yeah, she <laughs> smells something out there. Sticking her nose in the ground. So you really want to be you know, thorough about lining it up as best you can. There we go, that's good. Take that down. And put this aside. Magic. I'm gonna ask you to set that over there. And yeah, I get you. Get this out. Yeah. And grab the dry one. Can you give me the dry one, Olivia? And put this in place of it. And that's almost dry and ready to print on. Um, if somebody, um, I, I've, I've imposed on Caroline so much. We could take that over to the uh, air, uh, hair dryer and dry that. That would be awesome. Um, and see where my uh, so I'm going to move my feet. I turn my screen around. I'm gonna uh. Move them up here. That could pose a problem. All right. So hopefully that wasn't too long. I don't think it was. So it should be okay with my feet. And we're good. And so I would do a flood stroke. And if you want a background color, we should do that before we paint on the screen whatsoever. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah. You do, yeah, if you do a big background color, that'd be your first stencil. Okay. Yep. So I'm set this. To dry? This is a terrible. Is angle. it dry? It should be. It was pretty close. I mean, this one spot is just like tacky. But it's not. That, like, well, it's not like I'm going to show these. Let's. Aww. Uh, what? I, I would never spot. show this in public. It's that one spot. Oh, uh, I see. <laughs> Public. Well, it's on video, so yeah, obviously yeah. it's going to be public. Yeah. It's going to be on YouTube, too. Alright, so then I have that down. 
on my next. And we would just keep repeating this till you're done with all of your tab paper for this color. Magic. And I'm not going to do another flood stroke because we're done with this color. Uh, so I'm going to scrape off that excess ink. And <laughs> yes, <out> the <laughs> excess out of here. And I go through the cleaning process again. Yay. And then I'll do my last one. Do I need to do the last one? Or yes. You want to see the last one? Okay, I'll do the last one. <laughs> I mean, yeah. No, it's fine. I just, I didn't know if I was boring you guys. Caitlin, got the name right. Can you grab me a little blue squeegee over there? So if I'm using a smaller stencil, I want to use a squeegee that is just a little bit bigger than the stencil itself. So this is a perfect size squeegee for this stencil. I wouldn't want to use this giant squeegee. Um, so smaller squeegee, smaller stencil, or smaller stencil, smaller squeegee. Uh, do my flood stroke. And I'm ready to print on my acetate. And I can still use two hands. Could use one, but if I want to be sure I'm getting a nice even pull, I'll use two. I'm doing my flood stroke again. And prop this up. Actually, I'm not going to be able to prop that. So I want to clear this working area to get my working copy. Can you hand me that, Caroline? So because of how much this is sticking out, I want to make sure my working area is clean and nothing is going to get on my paper. So. All right, so now I just line this one up. And sometimes um, your paper will be curled or the acetate can be curled. I want to flatten it out and make sure it lines up as best as possible. There we go. One more of these, right? No, it's not oh, over here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, who wants to do a pull? Mm. Right. Competition. So right here is the stencil, and you'll use two hands. Do I have to put more on, or should that be? No, there's enough on the blade. What you can do if you, you, you if it's pulled pulled up there, you're okay. You can also slap it off your blade like that, okay. and you're right. And you want to keep it at like a 70 to 80 degree angle, which is good. Straight pull. Now see how you bent the blade a lot? You want to try not to. You put so much pressure, the blade was actually blent, bent, not blent, but bent. You want to try not to do that because that could um, make it bleed. We'll see if that happened. It's not bad. Um, so this color, I would actually do two pulls because blue is so transparent. So do a second pull and firm, but not so firm you're bending the blade like crazy. So. Go ahead and pull right over that. You don't have to do a flood for your second pull. Okay, so wait, I'm scared. I don't want to bend it again. There you go. Perfect, just like that. And then flood it. Flood it. How do I do that again? All right, so you slap the ink down um, so you get enough ink there, and you just pull it across evenly. Not, you don't have to press so tight. You just, there you go. That's good. As long as it filled our entire stencil. What's good. the point of doing that? Exactly? So the flood stroke is to put ink in the stencil mm -hmm. so that the stencil doesn't, um, the ink doesn't dry inside the stencil. So if you didn't do the flood stroke, what little ink is left in there after you pull would dry up and then it would block the ink from coming through and you would get little spots that you don't want. All right, who wants to do it, uh, the next one? We have one more to print. 
flooded it so you just have to print. So I It's, it's, oh, that's the shape of it. It's, yeah, it's oh, that's it. But you can see this uh, blue is very transparent. Um, we can see the green coming through. And that could be something you plan um, if you're thinking about your colors and you want to get more out of a color. Uh, depending on what transparent color you pull over another, it might give you a third color. So pulling a blue over a yellow might create a green. So you may plan on having overlapping areas that, that allow for transparency to give you a third color. Does that make sense? Any questions about the printing process? All right, so you know how to put the stencil, 